Welcome to Problems with Live Steam Injectors Part 3. The boiler check valve itself can often cause problems if the water flow is restricted by the ball valve, or if the water goes around too many corners. With the usual standard type of check valve this is not a problem, but this one has a rotary valve fitted to it to isolate the check valve in case anything goes wrong with it internally, and by that I mean the ball valve. In the case of this particular check valve, there is a bit of a problem with the alignment of the shut-off valve internally. I need to make a modification to it. The first thing to do is to remove it from the engine and clear away any of the pieces of gasket that are left behind. I recently removed this check valve to align the mounting hole and when I refitted it using a new gasket over the top of the old one, I used a compound called red hermatite and what this did was stick the gaskets together so this time the original gasket was removed from the boiler bush. This red hermatite sealant's really good. It's not silicone based and it's been around for years, but it really sticks the gasket to whatever you want to stick it to. I scraped off most of the remaining gasket using a small screwdriver, being very careful not to stick it in my hand. But there were some very stubborn pieces of gasket still stuck to the check valve. First of all, I tried a flapper wheel in my Proxon motor tool, then I tried some sandpaper, but in the end it occurred to me that I had exactly the right tool for the job. It's a Proxon angle grinder fitted with a flapper wheel. And by gentle application of this it was perfect for the job and in no time at all the flange was cleaner than it had ever been. Before refitting this check valve I will of course make a new gasket. And this time thanks to the hermatite I was able to remove the old gasket material cleanly. So when I refit the check valve with the new gasket... I won't need to use any sealant at all. In this shot, I'm actually trying to show down inside the valve where there is clearly quite a large step between the center rotary part of the shut-off valve and the casting. By using a torch, I can clearly see this step, but I can't get it with the camera. More about this later. It's time to remove the gland nut and dismantle the valve. Once I removed the gland nut, I could not withdraw the rotary valve because the top part of the casting, where it's threaded, has been crimped to make it a smaller diameter, so you cannot withdraw the rotary part of the valve. This must be a safety feature. Because the hole through the centre of the valve is in the wrong place, I need to remove it from the casting. No matter how many times I rotated the casting around the valve, it would not come loose. What I had to do was use my bandsaw and carefully remove the end two threads. I didn't video this operation because there was nothing to see my hands were in the way. Once I removed the last couple of threads, I could withdraw the centre part. If you've been watching the series A Large Model Showman's Engine, you may have seen the part where I corrected the position of the hole in the flange. And there was a bit of a step there too, so now is a good time to remove that with a very small grinder. Because I can't see the problem with the camera and it's quite difficult to explain, I thought I would do a quick sketch. But don't get the wrong idea, I'm not trying to compete with my friend Alexander Cairns or Leonardo da Vinci. But this should illustrate what's wrong. The top drawing shows how it should be, the bottom drawing shows how it is. Obviously this drawing is not to scale, but you get the idea. You can clearly see in the bottom drawing, which is a magnification of the first one, there is a definite step, and this is not good for a water column moving and not good for getting satisfactory water injection from a live steam injector. This is the problem with the check valve. The hole is just the right size, but it's in the wrong place. How did I correct that? Very clumsily to start with by using a file. I made the hole a lot larger and moved it in the right direction. I didn't leave it like this though. Once I'd removed the bulk of the material, I put it in the milling machine and used a milling cutter to clean it up. And if only I'd pressed the record button, I'd be able to show that operation, but alas, I forgot to do that. If you look carefully at this clip, you can still see there's a bit of a smoothed out step in the casting, but the step between the casting and the centre rotary part of the valve has now disappeared. Now it's time to refit the packing and refit the large gland nut that holds everything together. Not forgetting to fit the obligatory O-ring before doing that. As far as I'm concerned, this check valve should now work perfectly. Previously, I had to move the position of the hole in the flange to align with the boiler bush. 
which is not important because I've ground away the step, and now the waterway through this valve is exactly the same from the water inlet to the water outlet. Time for a quick test. That seems OK, the compressed air blows through the unit very well. Now I'm closing the valve. That's working fine, the hiss you can hear is the air leaking from around the air inlet that I'm holding in position with my hand. I think this should be OK. When I have a final look using the torch, I can clearly see that the way through the shut-off valve is now clear, no step. I'm hoping that when I get it all back together and try the injector, it picks up quickly and injects water into the boiler without dribbling. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.